Let's talk about the risks and benefits of drugs such as ibrutinib and edralazib. There are very um, different toxicity profiles for both drugs. They work similarly, and if you were blinded and you didn't know what you were getting, probably you would feel the same um, immediately because the drugs work very rapidly in melting your lymph nodes and your energy level kind of feels a little bit better just because you have less amount of lymphadenopathy. But the toxicity profile is kind of like pretty clear after a while. With ibrutinib, you may notice commonly um, diarrhea very early on that usually lasts for about two or three months in about 50% of the patients. Um, the diarrhea or dyspepsia or GI disturbances are limited. Very rarely you need to be hospitalized, extremely rarely. Um, and for the most time, your body eventually gets used to taking an oral drug. The diarrhea that you see with adralazib is very different. It usually doesn't happen at the beginning of the therapy. It happens on average in all the cases that we uh, evaluated. On average, the time to develop the first diarrhea that was severe was seven months. So this diarrhea is different because if untreated, you can actually develop a severe colitis and the colitis can lead to perforation and you could actually die if you don't treat it soon enough or um, acknowledge that this is a different type of diarrhea. We don't understand why this diarrhea is different, but with idelalacep, if you develop this severe colitis, which can mean up to like 20 times of going to the bathroom in one day and become severely dehydrated, you need to start steroids immediately. The steroids will help your body control this autoimmune complication. We are not certain why certain people get it and why some people don't. I have some patients that have been on the drug idelalazib for over four years and have never gotten it. But I have other patients that are elderly and frail that have gotten it a couple of months into therapy. So we don't really know who or what, and the only important concept that I want you to remember is tell your doctor immediately if you start having diarrhea. One of my patients, uh, for example, I told him at every visit, at any diarrhea, he should call me immediately to let me know. And um, after two years of being on the drug, he totally forgot, even though I had told him the last visit. So by the time he called me, he had been having diarrhea every day for two weeks. That's, that shouldn't happen. It's very important that you communicate with your doctor immediately because the longer that you wait, the harder it is for us to control it and you might need to be hospitalized. So it's better to start a therapy with steroids sooner once an infection has been uh, ruled out. Um, another important side effect that is different between the two drugs is atrial fibrillation. So abrutinib treated patients can get atrial fibrillation in about 5 to 10 percent of the cases. We don't understand why this happens still. Um, we think it might be an off-target effect of the drug. But if you start feeling short of breath, palpitations, your heart racing, difficulty walking upstairs, or um, any other new symptoms that are affecting your, your heart and your well-being, tell your doctor because you may have a new arrhythmia. And with that, if you have enough risk factors, your doctor or cardiology doctor may choose to start you on a drug called warfarin or coumadin. And that's when the problem starts for patients with ibrutinib. Ibrutinib in some patients can cause bleeding. Most of the time it's a very um, mild bleeding, meaning only bleeding of the nose, bleeding when you pee, um, bleeding when you move your bowels, very minimal or cosmetic bleeding on the skin. But in a minority of cases, you can have severe bleeding, including bleeding in the head. It happens extremely rarely, and I can count the patients that I have seen with that, but it can be devastating. So if you at any moment when you're taking a brutinib have any blurry vision, a headache that doesn't go away, or any new neurological findings that are totally new, you have to immediately go to the ER or call your doctor because of that potential rare side effect. 
Now, idelalacep, on the other hand, doesn't have that side effect of bleeding events. It can have other side effects, and those include, as a black box warning, um, pneumonitis, which is an inflammation of the lungs so bad that you can actually have very difficult um, breathing. So you might need to be intubated if it gets that severe and you can develop fibrosis of the lungs if it's untreated. It's very important to tell your doctor if you're having difficulty breathing. It's very rare, but it can happen, and the doctors and the patients need to know of this side effect. And the other side effect that is not truly, um, it's, it's common, but it's not uh, significant to make you feel something. It's more like a, of a clinical laboratory finding it's a condition known as transaminitis, where your liver functional enzymes change. They can go very, very high just from drug toxicity. And the therapy for that is you stop the drug, give the liver time to recover, and uh, after uh, the recovery time, you can reintroduce the drug at a lower dose and see if your liver tolerates. Sometimes it's possible and sometimes it's not depends on the patient. But the liver toxicities can go and be very high for anyone and scary for anyone that is particularly young and uh, particularly if they've never had any prior chemotherapy. So that one, um, that's the reason why I ask my patients to come at least once a week or every two weeks for the first two months because the liver function abnormalities can happen usually without them having any symptoms. And that's the reason why I ask my patients to please abstain from drinking alcohol or using any other um, natural tea or therapies that may, we may not know if they have any interaction because they're metabolized by the liver for at least the first two months until we see how they tolerate. So those are the main differences in therapeutic um, safety and toxicity profile between ibrutinib and adelalacep. Um, last but not least, the other new drug recently approved, obinutuzumab, um, the third generation monoclonal antibody against CD20. That one has the main side effect of infusion reactions. So you have to tell your doctor immediately as soon as you're having an infusion reaction because infusion reaction is much more severe than rituximab. So they need to intervene much faster. Your blood pressure can drop or can go really high or your heart can start racing. So if that happens, you need to tell them so that they can institute therapies like with steroids and um, whatever is needed to, to control the infusion reaction. The other side effect, possible side effect is low platelets. So I keep an eye on the platelets to make sure that they don't go too low and neutrophils can drop. So if your doctor feels it appropriate, they might give you some antibiotics for prophylaxis or um, a shot to boost your white blood cell count.